dismissed to a certain extent because I am a new image partner. And no, 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 there's obviously an agenda here. But your argument can also be dismissed just as easily as I am the Marvel guy. I am trying yeah, to absolutely. keep the guys there. So, no, no, but I don't, I don't actually, as long I don't actually want anybody there but me, so I really have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not keeping anybody. We should talk. I don't think there's a few artists that I really want to keep. But other, no, but here's the thing. I actually, there's no artist I work with who I would be, I would kill to do a create on series. And the truth is, and you should do it. You should do it, Brian, because it can be done. <laughs> no, you can do it. And you can do it. it. It's in 1991. You've been dabbling for a long time. <laughs> But you brought up a good point for the writers. It's a yeah. lot easier because writers can produce more in a month than most artists can. Most artists can only do one. As, you know, God bless John. That's, that's, that's also a cop out. No, no, that's it not is. a cop out. It is. Because because you will, I know where you're going. Go ahead. I'll let you John go. Romita Jr. and Mark Bavier are, 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 are the, the unique uh, guys that can produce a, an amazing comic book and do two a month. You know, but it, it's only them. These other guys, this this money that you speak of, this imaginary money, that <laughs> also imaginary money. most book, how many books sell under five thousand, including? Do you think that including the guys I'm talking about, the people I've already stated, I'm talking about the people that some read the have, rarefied air. Some of them have. Some of well, them. Well, you and I have different have. definitions of rarefied air, but I, I'm just like. These guys are not going to be doing books that sell 5,000 copies. And saying that they are going to be doing books that only sell 5,000 copies is doing them a disservice. And it is a falsehood that you're trying to perpetrate. And I'm sorry for not getting a serious. It's a reality. No, it's a reality. It's there a are reality. a lot of creator-owned books that sell at that level. They shit. They sell shit. They sell for shit. The market, for literally as long as I've been making comics, and we were at Caliber, and if we broke 3,000, it was, it was a Jewish holiday, man. We just went <laughs> So we went crazy, but it, it, it's very it, it, to to pretend that you for sure are going to sell this. It's it's a, it's wrong. It's just this is a falsehood. It just is when all the money, all if, if you're the market do, share, all the market right. share proves otherwise that you probably aren't going to sell more than three, even if you're an image, even if you're a dark horse, and they're good books. And I'm not talking about quality. I'm talking you're talking about making a living that you can live on. All right. It also, for a lot of books, and I think, and I hate to do this, I can include the Little Brothers in this, is that it takes a while for the money to start really pumping, just because of the nature of the beast. And this was for any company. What happens is the book comes out, you get good reviews, oh, let's hope you get good reviews, and then the buzz starts building. But the buzz doesn't really affect your book, really, for the first six months, the first year. All right. And then when the trade comes out, that's when things start rolling. That trade starts saying to people, this book might, might not go away. Because sadly, a lot of independent books do go away by issue three. They just do. They just the, 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 the creative structure around them just falters, or those first numbers come out, you know, those first issue numbers come out. I don't care who you are. I don't know what book you're on. It's always a bummer. It don't matter what you always go. You know, it's never what you'd hoped it would be. Even if you hope for a thousand, it'll be ninety-nine. It just will, right? So, and then the book goes away. So the marketplace, as it is structured right now, is set up for books really to fail, which is sad. And I really wish it wasn't the case. But what happens is, most books don't make it. Let's say you put you. Let's say you're insane like me and you. You just keep sure. going. I'm going to keep making battle book. I don't give a shit. And you keep doing it. And then finally, you you, you make your money on it, right? Well, that, yeah, that's that's a certain case. That's but not that's case. most. But most books, if you're lucky, and I'm talking about, if you're lucky enough not to fail on your first issue, if you're lucky enough to make your first arc, if you're lucky enough to get a trade paperback for it, then maybe you'll see a check. And that's the truth. And I'm not, and I'm talking. I want to remind people because I know I'm the one talking money here. I didn't care, give a shit about the money. I don't think anyone should. Just make comics because you have to. If you don't make it, you're going to fucking lose your mind and you just you know go crazy. Make the comic because you want to, but I'm talking about if you're planning on quitting your job, it probably is never going to happen. And I actually work with a creator now who's like I think Koi Fan was working in, his, in the law firm up until recently. Because <coughs> he had no idea, 
You know, I mean, it, it's a scary show. This is scary. Even the eye of Ram Ram. So I just wanted to put it out there for people that what you're selling to me sounded almost irresponsible because it was selling the best version. Where I'm saying, like, the reality I've seen is this other thing. And if you you should say to people, you're probably not going to sell two thousand. Probably not going to make a hundred dollars. But you should do it because you should do it. And fuck all the rest. And I'm telling you, no matter what happens, ten years from now. I promise you, use me as an example. Ten years from now, you'd be so happy you drew this book. You'll be happier than anything else you've ever bought. That, that, this is what me and you agree. Sure, yeah. I think absolutely you should do it, even if, you, you know, and the, you know, uh, my buddy Stuart Immerman, who uh, does Ultimate Spider-Man, spends every other second he has on his love copy, right? And I love that he does that. You know what I mean? Because you can tell he needs both. And that's what I love. And that's kind of where I was always coming from. Not to, not to keep babbling here, but my point of view from this rarefied area is I need to do both. I actually don't feel like I dabble. I feel like I spend a great amount of time creating new ideas and creating new books, some of which haven't come out yet because I'm not ready to show them. But I empower it to continue this almost into its 10th year. That I feel that the, the experience of creating powers and the experience of creating Ultimate Spider-Man really helped each other tremendously for me as a creative talent. I, I like to be able to do whatever you want in the book can almost make you lazy. Because you can do that, I can do anything. Oh, kangaroos are on this page, I want to do kangaroos. And we know some guys that do that. They have a book and then the next page dinosaurs and the next page is ninjas and because you can do whatever you want. But it, it, it makes you fat and bloated and lazy. Whereas I like the fact that in Ultimate Spider-Man there's certain things I can't do, so it forces creativity. Like I can't have them swear even though you know they swear all the time. So I, I come up with different ways to approach my language. And these and, but when that gets too much, I go back to powers and I swear, 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 swear. And, and I, I know it'd be real, real, real dialogue. And these two elements together, I knew were were spectacular. And I told Mark Miller from the day I met him, do both. Do the other. Do both. Yeah. And and, they, and he and it took him eight years to to invent Creative Comics, but he, uh, he was able to, uh, to find this experience. And I know you've had this experience too when you were doing both. They rubbed off each other in a nice way. And I know for a while that you really enjoyed that rub off. Not to be. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy rubbing off. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, look. Um, so I went. Okay, good night. to do creator own work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm never going to say that it's not very hard to do creator own work, but it's just not true that there is no such thing as a bankable creator who can give guaranteed sales and a creator own show fee. business, man. My no, it's, it's it one. It Maybe that was a bad album, but look, if, if, if someone's going to go do a book about a librarian because they really just want to do a creator own book about a librarian, that's going to be a bit of a hard sell. I think people going into it are going to know that it's a bit of a hard sell. <laughs> I'm already doing it, but um, <laughs> I'm all zombies. You're all Avengers. Let's just get that established. But uh, did you know it's Dark Avengers? That is amazing. The new Avengers title. Who would have thought? <laughs> Is there anyone in here? Is there anyone here under, is there anyone in here under 20 years old? Can, can you? Oh, thank you. Okay. Look at this. What are we looking at? Who here can wants to make creator own comics? <laughs> Fantastic. Who here wants to work it's in? Gonna, it's going to be an uphill battle. All right. Mm -hmm. No, but but I, I think what they're appreciating, boy, and I would have honestly, <laughs> in my formative years. But it really appreciated listening to whoever was us in 1984 talk about this. Because I